Good evening. I hope you're well. We're going to be looking at how to write rubric seven. How to write for rubric seven. That's going to be task two, prompts 3A and 3B for elementary math, elementary literacy, and most secondary ed content areas. One of the first things that you need to do, of course, when you before you begin to write for task two, you should plan for task two. Whenever you are creating your lesson plans for the EdTPA, you should be looking ahead at task two and task three and finding out what types of things are required. In this case, this is a, um, an organizer that's created for elementary literacy. And this is in the video analysis worksheet that I have sent my students. But it's also available uh, through Illinois State University in their thinking organizer. And so here is the student action that's required by rubric seven for literacy. Students are developing an essential literacy strategy. What video clip with timestamps shows that? And then how is this action seen in the video? Students are developing related skills. Again, what video clip? How is this action seen in the video? Then you're looking for where you made you linked students' prior learning and their assets to new learning. So instructional connections between student characteristics and new learning. When did you make a connection between prior learning and personal cultural community assets? It's important to look at your own rubric to see how many of these have to be met. In most cases, or in um, the prior learning, is one that has to be met, but you can choose um, personal, cultural, or community assets. We'll come back to that when we look at rubric seven. So again, the video clip with the timestamps that shows this connection, and then kind of explaining what you're talking about in the video. I, similarly, this is the one for elementary math. Um, it would also be, um, people who are in content areas in secondary ed, you can look at your thinking organizer and find this exact same um, chart. That thinking organizer is available in your EdTPA material module on D2L. So you're engaging your students in learning. Students are developing understanding of mathematical concepts, your video clip, and description. And again, prior learning and probably one of these Three. Once you've organized that information, you can start um, putting it together in writing. And as we've talked about many times before, you, uh, I like for you to use my outlines first, and then um, you can for your first draft, and then later you can personalize it. So three A, explain how your instruction engage students in developing an essential literacy strategy and related skills. So you want to present evidence of student engagement in developing an essential literacy strategy and related skills of comprehending or composing texts. Now by now you should be used to this, be talking about this because a lot of what you talked about in your planning commentary was that. So now you're actually, you plan for it in your planning commentary, now you're actually going to go through and show how you did it. So this is important. Um, you can use this sentence stem on clip number, whatever, at timestamp, whatever. My students were engaged in, explain the learning task, which developed the, and then put in your essential literacy strategy, and related skills. Um, or, you know, you could make this into two sentences 
if you didn't have the uh, literacy strategy and the related skills all in one place, right? So, but this is just a, a stem to get you started. And then you want to explicitly describe how you deepened and extended their understanding. So, student engagement. How did you deepen and extend their understanding of the essential literacy strategy and related skills? I highly recommend looking at your Understanding Rubric Level Progression document for Rubric 7. Take a look at your ERLP for Rubric 7 and see if you can come up with uh, some uh, better idea about what exactly they're looking for in this rubric. You'll want to complete this with other examples from the clips um, if you've chosen them. So here's an example on clip 2 at timestamp. 5 to 10.30, my students were engaged in the learning task of comparing and contrasting our two important texts on the same topic, which developed the essential literacy strategy by having students take the important points in the text and decide whether they uh, were a comparison or a contrast. So then they go on to talk about uh, the related skills. Um, they make the point about the student makes the point about deepening and extending the learning of the uh, of the strategy. She keeps folding those words, build and extend, engaged. So uh, she has done a lot of good description here. So if you're math, then um, explain how your instruction engaged students in developing understanding of mathematical concepts. So you want to present evidence of student engagement in their understanding of mathematical concepts. So again, you're going to be thinking about how, how you deepened and extended their understanding of the mathematical concept. So um, again, your sentence stem on clip number one at timestamp whatever. My students were engaged um, in learning tasks whatever, which developed their understanding of mathematical, con whatever mathematical concept. Then you explicitly describe how you deepened and extended their understanding of mathematical content. If you have uh, other examples, you'll want to repeat this as you go through. Here's our example. I like, again, how this student is putting in a space here to make it easier to read. Um, on clip number two, at zero to three, my students were engaged in a whiteboard activity. As I go on to explain, she talks about procedural fluency. Uh, clip number one, starting at 9.03, students were engaged in a pocket chart activity. So. Now, rubric seven also includes all of 3A and 3B, so you want to describe how your instruction, your instruction linked students' prior academic learning and personal, cultural, and community assets with new learning. So you want to have a paragraph on links to prior learning. You must have this for a three. This is not optional. You must talk about links to prior learning because this is the level for proficiency. And you just say simply, I linked new learning to prior learning at clip number and then timestamp. Describe the action. And then what were the new learning? <laughs> grammatically correct. <laughs> what was the new learning and uh, what was the prior learning that you were linking to? So you need to do some elaboration. Um, so to score above a three, you're going to have to go further. Um, you need a paragraph that links personal assets and a paragraph that links cultural community assets. So I linked learning to personal uh, assets at clip number time stat. Describe your action. What was the personal asset you were linking to? Elaborate. And notice that here it states to score above a three, 
you'll need a good examples of number two or number three. So like I mentioned before, um, you get to choose personal assets or cultural and community assets. I'm not expecting you to do both. Just to go back there, I, um, so I linked learning to community or cultural assets. So you, as I said, you can choose to talk about cultural community assets or personal assets. Get your five. Here's the example for math. I link new learning to personal learning on clip um, one at timestamp uh, op six <laughs> to um, point two five. When I ask my students, blah, 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 notice the bolding, prior learning, new learning, prior knowledge, new learning, personal assets, clip two. Again, you can see how easy that is to um, uh, score it when those words are bolded. So let's take a look at the rubric for rubric seven. Again, this is engaging students in learning. Level one, this is the math rubric, and this is scored from primarily the video with an explanation in prompt three. That means that the score is going to consider the video, the primary source of, of evidence. So if you say that you've done something in your commentary, but the score can't find it in the video, then it's not going to count for you. All of this top part comes from the video evidence that you explain uh, and describe in 3A. And all this bottom part comes from it, uh, video evidence that you describe in 3B. So it's very similar. I want you to imagine uh, anybody that's got um, uh, level three and level four level five. Imagine here that it doesn't say mathematical concepts. If you're a history, secondary history or secondary science, just imagine that your own SSE are here and that is what your rubric seven looks like. But let's take a look at what you need to do. Um, again, you're checking your own rubric seven to see how many of the SSE you have to meet um, to get a three, a four, or a five. Basically, a level one is because you have very lower level blooms going on in your activity. At a level three, we start seeing the word engaged. So here the students are participating in tasks that are vaguely superficially related to the central focus. Here students are participating in tasks, but this is engaged. So it's just a, a higher level of, of engagement. It's not just participating, going along, following along, maybe even just copying in the blanks, but it's also, you know, being involved and engaged with the material. And then here, level five, they're engaged in learning tasks that deepen and extend their understanding of mathematical concepts. This is the literacy, rubric seven. Again, you've got the uh, same types of things. All this evidence comes from 3A up here. All this comes from 3B. You want to make sure that to get a three, students are engaged in learning tasks that address their understanding of the literacy strategy and related skills. And then here, students are engaged in learning tasks that integrate their understanding of essential literacy strategy and related skills. And here students are engaged in learning tasks that deepen and extend their understanding of the literacy strategy and related skills. How do you know the difference between engaged in tasks that address, engaged in tasks that integrate, engaged in tasks that deepen? So how does one find out what the difference is? Well, you have to look at your EARL, at your Understanding Rubric Level Progression. 
everybody has to get that out. Look at rubric seven. Look at their descriptor for a three. Look at their descriptor for how you uh, how a person makes a scoring decision between a three and a four and a four and five. If you are not teaching in these content areas, if you're secondary, look at your rubric seven. Your difference is going to be in this part right here where it's the SSE. Um, so uh, let's take a look. That's it. Uh, we can celebrate a little bit on finishing up our um, writing for rubric seven. That's prompt 3A and 3B. And even if yours was not a complete total match, this should be uh, good and helpful for you. And I hope you will continue watching through all the videos. The next one up will be um, how to write for rubric eight. See you in a minute.